Hi, my name is Eduardo Guerra and today I'm here to talk to you about what is technical debt. This is an expression that is used a lot on uh, the software development industry and if you don't understand this concept quite well, I think I can help you. So, what is the target audience for this video? It's anyone that makes decisions in a software project, which basically if you participate uh, somehow in a software project, this video is for you. If you are a software architect or a software developer, uh, it's important for you to understand uh, what is technical debt and how can you avoid it. If you are someone uh, that usually is called the project owner or someone that make decisions from the business perspective, especially about the priority of the tasks that the developers uh, are going to perform, this video is also for you. That will help you to see the impact of prioritizing or not the technical tasks in your project. And I'm sure that if you are a developer and you are watching this video, you will want to show this, it to your product owner. So let's start with an example uh, out of software development domain. Uh, imagine that you got a debt, borrow some money. What happens some months later if you want to pay that debt? I think that all of you know that because of the interest, this debt will increase. So to pay for this debt today, you are going to pay an amount and some months later, you are going to pay a higher amount. Right? So, but what happens if you had a debt and don't pay, don't pay, interest, interest, interest. What happened some years later? Well, sometimes uh, it will reach a point that you cannot pay it anymore. This debt will be like forever because the amount that you uh, get uh, each month, it's not even uh, enough to pay for the interest. So even if you pick up all the money that you have and try to pay the debt, the debt will keep increasing. So uh, sometimes uh, the debt is uh, so high that um, it increases a lot through many times at many um, months and the time is passing that reaches a point that's not viable to pay this debt anymore, right? Well, but let's talk about a different kind of debt, a technical debt. Technical debt is a metaphor used in software development for problems that are harder to fix or are more expensive to fix through the time which means if you have um, something that is a technical debt now, if you fix, you are going to spend some time, but if you wait some time to fix, you are going to spend more time. So, uh, some examples of technical debt. Uh, imagine that you have large methods and large classes. They are hard to maintain and they usually keep growing since people don't know how to handle this, they just put more code there. Some unnecessary complexity because people will just spend more time uh, to understand the code than necessary. High coupling among classes, something that have to do with one classes, but you need to, uh, everything that you change there have impact in many parts of the system and even concerns spread across the code that for fixing something or changing something you need to um, you need to uh, change different points in the code 
So um, these are examples that technical damp. So let's go back to our uh, initial example, but now with technical depth. So if you have a technical depth in the code and you can see that I put some bugs, but they are not actually bugs. They are not, let's say, uh, malfunction code. They are uh, things that are not good. That's, that's why I showed for you this example. They are not necessarily mean that the code um, is not correct, but has a poor quality. So what happens if you have a, a code with technical debt, if you have a team working uh, on that code base some days later? Well, as I think you imagine, the debt will increase and I will explain you why it increased. Uh, for example, imagine that you, you find uh, a piece of code that do exactly what you need but it has some parts around it it is not very easy to understand it's not easy to reuse because the design is not good uh, what you will do you're going to copy and paste this piece of code to somewhere else where you need so you had a technical depth in one place now you have it in two places and if you need to do some maintenance you need to do in two different places in the code or what happens a lot you're going to do the maintenance in one place and will leave a bug on the second place uh, imagine that the developer have a little um, weight in the conscience to copy and paste the code and if he do not understand the initial code he okay i will do it again so even if he do a very good code having two parts of the software that do exactly the same thing in different ways is another kind of debt because when you do maintenance you uh, we need to uh, do in the both places and even what I, uh, I already see happening if you have two places that do the same thing when another developer go to the code and need to do that thing he will see should I use the A or should I use the B do you know what which one he's going to use none of them he will create the solution C because he don't know which one he should use so I already see that happening and then you this this dab keep growing keep growing and even if uh, the same task that the developer um, uh, do in a in a code uh, without the technical depth and a similar code with the technical depth the developer will spend more time by handling that technical depth even understanding what is there and doing the things that he will spend in the code without that so this additional time that you spend it's some kind of costs that you are paying for this technical debt and I already see that many times you have, for example, a, a, a large method with a lot of conditional code and then uh, developers need to um, add some feature or change this code. Then what he do is he keep adding code, keep adding code and conditional and complex code. Then you have this large class large method with a lot of conditionals very complex to understand because people are just adding code adding code because uh, it was the initial idea of how the code was conceived and he kept doing this way this way without changing the design without trying to separate things and this method is uh, become every time more and more and more complex and every time more and more hard to handle this is I already see that happening in some companies where you have uh, and, and I, I have to say this 
the the part of the code that hap th that happens is usually like the heart of the system are the most important parts that uh, uh, need frequently on updates and the the code the application does not have a design uh, created to uh, thinking about uh, how this this part these functionalities are going to grow and then developers keep putting a lot of messy code on the same place and this code it's very hard it's very error prone and um, you will take a lot of time usually only the let's say the senior developers are allowed to put their hands on this let's say complex and crucial code to your application and even if you have the technical depth in one part of the system then you you keep uh, you you have other parts calling it and getting coupled with that class uh, if you want to change it uh, for example imagine in the previous example if you have uh, this method that keep growing keep growing then you decide for example no I should uh, pass another parameter I should pass uh, a, a class that can customize part of these things then I can move some code to this class and then you will have to change all of all other parts of the code that call this method so yeah uh, you you start to create bounds you create coupling between the classes and then to change one thing you have to change many others so it's uh, every time it becomes harder to make that change well i will come back with the same question now instead of some weeks later it's some months later so you have a technical dent you don't handle it you don't pay it you have a lot of developers working in that code and this debt keep growing keep growing what happens some months later it's something like this wow very hard uh, to put your hand on that code right I I did not want and sometimes it, you have so much depth, so much depth that you spend so much time handling with this that you have, um, uh, you don't have much time to deal with what is actually important, which is the business part of the application. And um, sometimes you reach a point that there is no turning back, like the depth that you cannot pay it anymore. Uh, it can become cheaper to create a new system than to deal with the technical debt. And that's this kind of system that you usually um, listen people calling it the legacy system. Usually a legacy system is a system that uh, reached that point that is cheaper for you to create a new one than to deal with the technical debt. And unfortunately, there are some uh, systems that start with a very poor design and these problems keep growing that you can say that it was born legacy yes very sad so uh, I hope that you are uh, saying okay this is very bad but how we can deal with this technical debt how we can handle this so uh, first thing is spend some time to refactor the code frequently make it a habit on your developer sometimes you say oh i don't have time to to refactor because i i, I there was so much complexity many things i i ha i need to handle with that depth it's like this guy with this square uh um wheel bicycle that uh, he, I don't have time to listen to because it's very hard here. But if you if you if you spend some time maybe refactoring the bike, you it can be easier and maybe you will reach your destination faster. So uh, I think this this image represents perfectly uh, 
what is when you say that you don't have time to refactor and the idea is not to um, like ah let's spend the day refactoring no it's part of your job you are doing something then you, you stop for refactoring it a little bit it will spend a little time each day but in the end you will have uh, these little debts are going to be repaid with this refactoring um, uh, sometimes can be something simple like breaking a method when it starts to grow uh, renaming a variable that is not easy to understand um, finding a better solution for uh, some sequence of con conditionals then uh, spending this time with refactoring and if you are uh, a project only understanding the importance of the developers uh, refactoring the code is very important testing automated testing it's very very important because it makes it safe to refactor and change existing code when you have tests uh, if you are updating the code it, it can be for uh, adding a new fe feature or even when you are refactoring to remove some debt that is still small uh, it's safer for you because you can run the test and see if it's something uh, was changed on the exist the, the features that was previously working and finally identify and manage your technical debts so uh, what you what you need to have about the debt the problem what is the bad consequence of uh, having this debt what is the estimated interest so uh, how this debt grows and how much time you need to fix this debt so are the things that are making debt are things that are making you uh, to uh, waste time during development or there are problems that keep growing and becoming harder to fix through time so let me give you an example um, sometimes we uh, it was a, a part of the code that was very hard to to handle and the, the every time the tasks that need to handle that class are uh, are delaying so uh, when the developers um, register this technical debt they saw that the time to fix it uh, will be repaid maybe in one month based on the time that they spend having to handle with that so for the product owner it was very easy to make the decision so it was going to be paid in one month of uh, uh, of some wasting that we won't have so fix it put on the high priority so if you identify and manage your debts uh, always uh, uh, discussing with your team what are the debts what you need to do about it so it will help a lot uh, to make these things visible and make um, the product owner and the team to make some decision about this technical debt so to finish I have to say that sometimes debt is not bad uh, many people uh, without uh, getting a debt will not be able to buy their car or their houses so getting some debt sometimes is important uh, sometimes you need you have uh, to show uh, that for a client or you need to you have uh, uh, a release date that you cannot uh, change and sometimes you might do something on the code that is not very let's say not very good not very beautiful but uh, sometimes they are needed because you need to have a version working fast but the problem is when you ignore it and keep working because they will grow and that will be really bad through time so having a uh, technical debt sometimes can be important but it should be managed and repaid as soon as you can so that's it Thanks a lot for watching this lecture and I hope that you leave a like and subscribe 
to the university chain. Thanks a lot. See you.